If you're an entrepreneur looking to give your brand an edge in a crowded market, you're in the right place. In this video, I'm going to go through one of my clients' entire brand strategy. And more specifically, I will be diving into how to analyze your competitors and make your brand stand out. Whether you're a pro or just getting started, I've got practical tips on how to make your brand shine. Stick around to the very end. Trust me, you don't want to miss this. What's up, bosses? I'm Tarleen, your personal brand consultant at Boss Diplomat, making you look so good you can't be ignored. Let me introduce to you Colin Turner, aka Fitness Turner Running Coach. Colin has so much competition for what he actually does. Now you wouldn't think that a running coach has as many competitors as he does, but his location makes it possible because he's based in Boston, United States. The Boston Marathon is a huge event that happens on an ongoing basis. And of course, there's a lot of running coach who are geographically positioned in that area. As a result, it was very hard for Colin to get new clients who were interested in what he had to share and actually getting him booked. He got in touch with the fairy boss mother. And one of the things that I noticed about Colin's branding was that he didn't really have a brand. Okay, let me let me specify this. He had his colors, he had a really good logo done, he had a business name that did stand out and was not taken by other competitors, but the problem with his brand positioning is his incoherency. He just didn't know how to talk about his business. He didn't know who his target audience was. He thought he knew what he wanted in his business, and this was, to help experienced runners who constantly kept getting injured and re-injured. Then we did one little thing in his business that really opened up his eyes to all of the possibilities for his specific business. Now let's take a quick look at some of the behind the scenes information that he shared with me during our first process as part of the rebrand strategy. Are you working both virtually and physically? Yeah, primarily, I'd like to be working virtually, but okay. there are people here in Boston, in my neighborhood, who I connect with and who I do work with individually, but like in person. So uh, my job will be to identify who those key competitors are going to be yeah. on the virtual space. So we're going to look at oh. the main competitors. I'm going to show you what their website looks like. And we're basically going to take out the things that you love about their websites and try to embed it into your new website. So what's working really well as a coach? What do you like about the way they're presenting themselves? And then as a, I think as a, as a client, if you were to be their client, what are the things that's going to drive you insane that we can mitigate at the beginning? Because we mm -hmm. want to make sure that the experience that your customers go through when they're engaging with your brand online, it needs to be seamless. It needs to be as mm -hmm. like, foolproof as possible we want it to be very easy on them and of course behind the scenes there's going to be a series of onboarding so we need to think in advance and this is going to be your first homework Colin and for you and your interns is what is the what does the onboarding process look like for your clients yeah I'm really excited to um, build out more uh, more services and options for clients because right now i really have one program that i'm marketing to clients and then it's like um kind of a la carte created contract with people so the mm -hmm. the big program is 12 weeks long it's called the running empowerment program and it's like a curriculum that takes them through every like fundamental concept in running without injury and it's designed to be like done with a small group in 12 straight weeks and has like you know a payment system it's pay per month or all at once that's like that's established many people have gone through that program <clears throat> and it's expensive because it's 12 weeks long and how, how much is that program colin i've been charging between 600 and 900 Colin was adamant that his teaching background was the thing that would elevate his brand and his business. And you know what? I agree with him a hundred percent. 
he has a very clear way to explain certain things that runners were doing on an ongoing basis, which led to injury. But the problem was he's talking to the wrong people. These are runners who have a lot of experience. And when you start to look into the competition, we started to realize, hmm, there are a lot of running coaches specifically in the area that he was who actually did the exact same thing that he was doing. Now, as a result, imagine imagine a lane full of runners. They're all bashing into each other. They're trying to overtake each other. Some of them are slightly behind and some of them are slightly ahead. That was the status of his business. There was just too many people in the same lane. So what I did was I picked Colin up and I moved him to another lane, another lane that had the same path, but didn't have as many competitors. He was going to a different path altogether. And what we realized then is he was able to sprint, run, do whatever he wanted to without running into as many competition. How we did that was by doing a competitor analysis. A competitor analysis doesn't have to be a fancy thing that requires software and a ton of time. All we did was look at all of the running coaches that were coming up on his radar. These are running coaches who were in within a 15 mile radius of where Colin was operating. And then what I did was create a huge list of all of these competitors. Then I looked at where they are present. Do they have a website? Are they on social media? How consistent are they? How often do they post? Are they alive on their business, right? Are they present with their business? Are they the face of their business? So once I compiled that list, I then looked at his top 10 competition. Let's take a look at what I revealed for Colin during that brand analysis moment. So the first thing that you notice with Macmillan running, um, as a branding expert, the first thing that goes to my eyes are they've got a very consistent color scheme. So as you can see, the orange and the black and the and the white is what they're focusing on. But they've got this thing. This is their main um, lead magnet. So they're using a running calculator to get people to stay on their website. But a newbie will not be using this because they no. don't know what this is. No, that's Greek. To a new runner, yeah, they have no idea. They'll have absolutely no idea. Um, and then they've got this massive training plan. Uh -huh. It goes on and on and wow. on so you can see like yeah this is a bq i was like what the hell does bq stand right. for and clearly it doesn't seem like this is for a newbie this is definitely for people who want to take their fitness their running goals to the next level but have you noticed like right underneath is the tagline stronger faster further stronger mm -hmm. faster further yeah it's such a cliche tagline in the running world mm -hmm. It's used over and over again. So these guys, huge community, massive. So definitely one for us to watch out on. And they're, they're quite local to you. See, when you start to look at your competitor's website, your competitor's branding and your competitor's brand position, you'll start to see a pattern or you'll start to see gaps where there were no gaps at the beginning because you were not aware of all of this information. When I do a brand strategy, I have to look at the evidence that's presented. Of course, there's always going to be competitors who are not online. You know what? Ignore them. Ignore them because nowadays you have to be online to have a successful business. You have to have that presence. You have to be available somewhere. And being online is the best way to be found. So I ignored anyone who wasn't online. Then we started to see a pattern that kept reoccurring. The first pattern we noticed was, number one, a lot of these running coaches were going after experienced marathon runners. Number two, many of them had the color orange or red or something that demonstrated heat. And this is something that I wanted to really move Colin away from. Number three, hello, there was a whole audience that was missing with regards to his target audience. What about the beginner runners? People who actually didn't like running. No one was talking about the beginners. No one was talking about the fact that if you start to run, you may actually get injured because you don't even know what you're doing. You're wearing the wrong shoes. 
you you have the wrong cadence you have the wrong posture when you're running and this will lead to injury so many of colin's competitors including himself were focused on the wrong target audience the wrong target audience that was overcrowded and oversaturated there were so many coaches who were focused on just that audience that no one was looking beyond the experts so i positioned colin to focus on the beginners even the pre-beginners, forget about just the beginners. These are people who absolutely hated running. These are people who used to say, I suck at running or running sucks or I don't even want to think about running because it's too hard. These are people who haven't even started to run or the very idea of even thinking about running got them sweating. That's his new target audience now. That's the audience, that's his primary bullseye that we started to rebrand his entire business around. And as a result, his language and how he spoke about his programs and his services completely changed. Based on this information on who his new target audience is, we were then able to build his website redesign so that the flow of information was only talking to those newbies who hate running. The idea of running really scared them. They just needed a lot of guidance. We then used Colin's teaching background as an advantage because we were able to build a curriculum for these newbies who had no idea where to start. We created a program that started off at the very beginning with level one, talking about footwear, talking about sleep, talking about diet, talking about building a habit, and then progressing eventually to running for a long period of time. Let's say about half an hour, even half an hour for a newbie is a long time to run consistently. The other element that we added to Colin's rebrand was the hook. The hook is really, really important when you are jumping on someone's website. Your website should draw people in immediately. And this doesn't mean that they're drawn into a specific program. It just means this is a one-off service or a one-off product that your new target audience can test out. With regards to Colin, we decided that this new lead product that would act as a lead magnet would be something called the gate analysis. The gate analysis is a quick exercise where you record yourself running and then you send this information to Coach Colin and then he will be able to analyze what your gate is looking like. Why is this important for someone who's not really run before? He's able to share with you how you could potentially injure yourself based on how you're currently running you know your posture is wrong your knee is out slightly you have you know the way you're stepping is a little awkward he's able to analyze all this in one sitting and this information is golden because number one again his competitors were not offering this and if his competitors were offering it they were not running coaches these are podiatrists who were specifically helping people with foot issues or foot problems or back pain or that kind of stuff but not about running technique and let's talk sales strategy one of the most important part of rebranding is actually looking at your pricing strategy because let me explain when you rebrand all of a sudden your value goes up because you are very clear about who you serve what you offer and how you solve a very specific problem with this rebrand i've now positioned you from here to here and then i need to lift you up to make sure that what you are offering in your brand actually matches the value of your program or your product now with colin he was definitely underpricing himself to the point where he needed a big volume of students to be able to make a decent monthly living so we upped his monthly packages. What we decided was the monthly membership would be slightly higher, just as an entry point for individuals to learn as, as much about running from Colin as possible. And then the membership will decrease so that they will continue having access to the program and access to Colin's one-to-one -one guidance. Let's take a look at what Colin thought when he first looked at his website redesign. All right, I wanna hear your first impressions when you saw the, the website. Um, I, I was so excited about it and I loved the brightness and the colors and the like first initial page where people see the map and pictures. Um, I thought the like being able to scroll down and see so much great information about my program 
was so cool. Um, you did a great job, like putting it into words that are clear for someone who's not in the program and for beginners, which is just what I wanted for it to be accessible and be like approachable for someone who doesn't run. The tone was like informal and a little bit like snarky and a little bit funny, which I really like. It's like not taking this too seriously. This is not like an elite running academy. This is like for people who hate running mm. and wish they didn't. And so I really love that tone. Um, the specific pages for like the program with the descriptions of each level are really, really great. And I think give people enough information to be like, okay, like this is for me. Mm. And for I think more experienced runners to be like, oh, okay, this is more for beginners. Like mm. I actually don't want them. I want them to see enough on the site where they self-select out. And so I don't get a bunch of like super experienced, like marathoners trying to qualify for Boston. Mm. Cause I think like those people won't, won't like it. One of the things I share with my clients is try to be as transparent as possible. There are so many solopreneurs who are actually really scared of sharing their price on their website. Be confident in what you're offering. And don't forget, you can always raise your price, never down, always up on a quarterly basis. And the benchmark to raising your prices is usually about 10% because then it's not a big jarring difference to what you used to charge to what you're charging right now. But then by the end of the year, you would have raised your price fully to 40%, which will make a massive difference to your pocket at the end of the year. Now that I've trained you on how to look at your brand from your target audience point of view, you are constantly gonna be evolving and tweaking and making changes so that you continually stay ahead. But in order to eliminate those threats, this is where consistency is so important. The more consistent you are with your branding, the further behind your competitors are because they are the ones that are constantly changing. They're the ones who are not sharing their prices because they're too scared of their competition undercutting them. We don't care about how much they are charging their clients because their value offer is not the same as you. The target audience is not the same as you. And even if the target audience is exactly the same as yours, your backstory, the reason why you started your business is completely different from theirs. Now that you know what happens behind the scenes with a complete rebrand strategy, hey, have a meeting with me. I do free mini brand sessions with any new solopreneurs that walk through my doors. I would love to show you the potential of how you can grow your brand to the next level. The link to my meeting is here somewhere, maybe in the description. Have a look. I can't wait to see you in the books and speak to you soon, solopreneurs.